Good morning friends. Welcome to the Edupedia world. The agenda for this tutorial is to learn about Java language building blocks. So we learn about the Java language building blocks that are Java tokens. We study what is tokens in Java. Then we study Java tokens categories. And then we cover two of the important categories of Java token. One is identifier and another is keywords. Within identifier, we'll also be covering variables. So now let's begin. So Java tokens are the building blocks of Java language. Like any language, suppose English, that needs alphabets and then alphabets form words or sentences and then paragraph. So the initial building blocks of English language is alphabet. So similarly, the initial building block for language Java is tokens. So let's see what are Java tokens. So basically, tokens are various Java program elements which are identified by the compiler. A token is a smallest element of a program that is meaningful to the compiler. So token has to be something which is having some meaning to the compiler so that compiler can understand that this is a Java token. For example, you cannot use alphabets of language Hindi in the language English. Similarly, you cannot use a tokens which is outside the formation of Java language. So that means you need to use only those tokens that are provided or having some rules and specification in a Java language. So that compiler can understand them. Tokens supported in Java includes keywords, variable, constants, special characters, operations, etc. Okay. So this is a diagram representation of tokens with states. Token includes variables, examples, sum, age, etc., operators, plus, minus, division, less than, greater than, etc. Then some of the keywords of Java example, int, break, class, double, special characters like dollar sign, hash sign, question mark sign, etc. Literals like 120, 11.5, E2.0, 31.50, etc. Okay, so these are some common examples of tokens. So let's see in um, which categories the tokens are divided. So tokens are majorly divided in five categories. Reserve words or keywords. So these are the words that Java has reserved for itself. So these are the words for which compiler has a special meaning. For example, break. So break is a keyword in Java. Compiler has already predefined meaning for this keyword. Then is identifier. So identifier is a Java token that is used by programmer to give name to anything in Java. So over here, anything includes Java variables, Java classes, Java methods, and we'll study it in detail. Okay, so uh, identifiers do have some specific rules to define. I mean, you cannot define identifier, you know, whatever you want. There have been specified rules so that compiler can understand that this is a user defined identifier. You need to follow that while creating any of the identifier. Then is literals. So literals is something that is having a particular value. For example, number 100, 1, 121, 11.5. So anything that is having a specific value. I mean, or we can say the value itself is called literal. Okay, so we do have different types of literal like integer literal, boolean literal, char literal. So like integer literal is 100, boolean literal is true or false, decimal literal is 11.5, char literal example is A or B. Okay, then we have operators. So operators 
then again have multiple categories like arithmetic operator, assignment operator, logical operator, and so on. So simple examples are plus, minus, divide, less than, greater than, not equals to. So these are common examples of operators. Then we have separators like or, and, and we'll study more about them later on. Okay, so these are the basic five categories of Java tokens. Now let's move ahead with the first category of Java token, which is Java identifier. So identifier are used by programmers to name things in Java, things such as variables, method, fields, classes, interface, exception, packages, etc. So you know anything that is user defined you uh, whatever you need to define in your java program you need to give it a particular name so that name is called as identifier and that thing could be variable or method or feed or a class name or an interface exception or anything else okay so semantically all characters in an identifier are significant including the case so upper and lower case in identifier are different. For example, the identifier count with capital C and count with small or a lower case C denote different name in Java. So um, count with the upper case of C and a count with the lower case of C are not same. So these are different identifiers. Okay. Technically, legal identifier must be composed of only Unicode characters numbers, currency symbols, and connecting characters like underscore. So, you know, these are some of the uh, composition of identifier. Like identifier can consist of a, either a unicode character or numbers, currency symbols, or connecting characters like underscore, or mixture of all of these. So, uh, it need to be among only these uh, five, we can say, composition. Okay, so now let's see uh, what are variables. So we have seen like uh, variable is a type of identifier, but what is the variable? So basically a Java variable is a piece of memory that can contain a data value. Variable thus has a data type. So variable is something that is having a piece of memory allocated to it. And that piece of memory can contain a data value. And uh, uh, the reference of that piece of memory, the name of that piece of memory is the Java variable. So every Java variable has a data type. So, you know, uh, the piece of memory, we need to define what kind of thing that piece of memory will contain. That piece of memory can either contain an int or a char or a boolean. So int, char, boolean is a data type of that particular variable and you need to define it while declaring your variable. So whenever you declare your variable, you need to define the data type and the variable name that is must. And then you can also define the value at the same time of declaration. Okay, so uh, variables are technically used to store information which your Java programs needs to do its jobs. So there could be a Java variable, let's say count, which is um, used to keep a count of how many times you are calling a piece of code or how many times uh, anything, you know, how many times account is being updated, anything. So now this count uh, need to be a variable. It need to have a data type, which could be int because we are just counting the number of times some uh, method is getting called so it can be int and it can have an initialization value so we can put it as zero because initially that piece of code won't be called but whenever you call that piece of code you can increment that count value so that is a java variable the count over here is a java variable which is storing some of the values so a piece of memory is allocated and how much memory is allocated will be dependent upon the data type. So um, in Java, each data type constitute a particular memory. We study about the data types uh, detail in other tutorial. 
So for now, let's consider a data type of byte is constituting one byte of memory. So that one byte of memory will be allocated to a variable. Let's say I have declared a variable byte A. So now A will be having one byte of memory and it can store any value of byte data type. Okay. Now, uh, here are some rules that you need to know while defining any of the identifier. So that can also be a variable. So these rules apply uh, defining any kind of uh, identifier, including variables, methods, or classes. Okay. So the first rule is identifier must start with a letter, a currency character, or a connecting character such as underscore. Identifier cannot start with a number. Okay, so it need to start either with a letter or with a dollar sign or with a underscore. It cannot start with a number or any other special character. Okay, after the first character, identifier can contain any combination of letters. So it can contain a currency character, connecting character, number in any combination, but it must start with either a letter or a dollar symbol or a underscore. In practice, there is no limit to the number of characters identifier can contain. So your variable name uh, or identifier name can be really long, but you know, as per standard, we try to keep it short uh, and understandable. Okay, so that it make a logical sense. Okay, next rule is you cannot use a Java keyword as an identifier. Example, enum, while, for, return. So you cannot use any of a Java keyword as an identifier. So you cannot declare a variable say int enum because enum is a keyword in Java. So you cannot declare a variable with a Java keyword name. Okay, the fourth rule states that the identifier in Java are case sensitive. So foo with lower case and a foo with upper case are two different identifiers. Okay, uh, so these were the rules uh, which you need to you know keep handy or you actually need to memorize them so that whenever you are declaring variables, just to make sure that you are not uh, declaring a wrong type of identifier or a wrong type of variable. Okay, so these are um, some examples of legal and um, legal identifiers. First, uh, we'll see some of the legal identifiers. So first is int underscore a. So it's legal. Why? Because it is starting with an underscore. Then we have int dollar c. Again, it's legal because it is starting with an dollar sign. Then we have int and then multiple underscores, then two underscore w. It is also legal because it is starting with an underscore and then it can have any combination from underscore, dollar sign, numbers or characters. So it's perfectly legal. Then we have int underscore dollar. This is also perfectly legal. Uh, then we have we are having a very long identifier. Say that int this underscore is underscore a underscore very underscore detailed and so and so so this is also perfectly legal because you know there is no uh, length defined for a name of a variable or a identifier so it can have that it is legal okay now we we'll see some of the examples of illegal identifiers so um, let's guess why it is illegal first one is int colon b so why it is illegal because it is having colon so it's not allowed and secondly it is starting with a colon which is absolutely no no okay so that's why it's illegal then we have int hyphen d again it's illegal because this character is not allowed in an identifier in the start it has to start with a dollar or a underscore or a letter again we have int e hash now why it is illegal? It is starting with a character. That's absolutely fine. Well, it's illegal because it is having hash and hash is not allowed in an identifier. Okay. 
then we are having int dot f again it cannot start with the dot that's why it's illegal then we have int 7g again it's illegal because we cannot start it with a number it has to be letter underscore or dollar okay so now we have seen a lot about identifiers and identifiers as variables also now we move forward to java keywords so let's study what are java keywords so basically keywords are identifiers that java reserved for its own use these identifiers have built-in meaning that cannot change thus programmer cannot use these identifiers for anything other than their built-in meanings so you know whenever you define whenever there is a defined uh, keyword in java it is having a special meaning to compiler for example enum so whenever the compiler encounters the keyword enum it knows that it is a keyword and the meaning of enum is this so you cannot use it as a uh, identifier it will know what to do with an enum because it is already defined keyword in java so it is having a built in meaning and you cannot change it anyhow okay Technically, Java classifies identifier and keyword as separate category of tokens, and that's the reason because any of the keyword cannot be identified. That's why these two are different categories of Java tokens. I hope uh, you have got the uh, sense what are keywords. So now uh, let's look at some of the keywords of Java. So you know, Java in total has about 50 keywords. And uh, these are the list of all the keywords present in Java. Uh, we'll just pick up a couple of them just to go through. Okay, so uh, one of a keyword is package. So in Java, we use package. Package is, you know, it's a namespace convention in Java. So everything in Java has to be within a package. Then we have a keyword new, which is used to define a, a object of a class so whenever you use a keyword new a memory uh, is allocated to an object and a new object is created for that particular class then we have in short char boolean so all these are data types that will make sure that uh, what kind of data can be stored in a particular variable okay or simply the type of data uh, well, there are many other like private, protected, public, switch, assert, continue, abstract, volatile. I mean, we study all of them, but you know, in the coming tutorials, since um, uh, these do have some deeper meaning and the deeper implementation, and it's important to know each one of them. So that's why we'll be building up our vocabulary of Java slowly. And uh, for now, yeah, I think that's it. So we have covered two types of Java tokens and we'll be studying remaining three Java tokens in upcoming tutorials. Okay guys, so thank you.